Lord, what a topic. But boy, it's something that we all need. And there's, all t- there's times when all of us blow it. And so, thank you for your patience. Uh, but speak to us, challenge us, and change us. For it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. So here's the, t- the title that I've selected for today. Patient, but I don't want patience. Um, and, um, you know, the, the typical saying has always been, never pray for patience because things will happen in your life that's going to cause you to develop patience. Well, we're going to talk about patience today, so I apologize, but I don't apologize. Uh, so anyhow, we'll look at it. We're going to have fun. Uh, so the, the key question is, um, how does God provide the help I need to deal with stress? And then the key idea, uh, which we are not there yet, we are living into this, is I am slow to anger and endure patiently under the unavoidable pressures of life. That does not describe me today in front of you. That describes me as Scripture calls me to be, that I strive to be, that I even pray to be, and that I want to be. Uh, but I'm not there, and my guess is, is you're not there either. But that doesn't mean that we're absolved from that. So anyhow, we just, that's, that's, that's our, our goal statement that we have, that something that we're trying to live into, one of the vir- virtues that it talks about in Scripture. The key text today is taken from Proverbs uh, chapter 14. Whoever is patient has great understanding but the one who is quick-tempered displays folly. Well, since it's Mother's Day, I thought I I had to bring mothers in here in in some way. Uh, And so let's see if moms, if you agree with this or if everybody else does too. Things mothers or women who have dealt with children or men know. Okay, so so let's, I, I've got, I think, four things here. Let's, let's just see if you would kind of agree with me. Um, a three-year-old voice is louder than 200 adults in a crowded restaurant. Or crowded plane. Uh, that's right, I, sh- I, sh- I should have had that. By the way, did you see on the news that I think it was JetBlue on one flight last week that if a, if a baby cried, everybody would get a free ticket? Yes, and they told them ahead of time. And a baby cried, and everybody got a free ticket. Um, they never do that on the planes that, that, that I'm on. You know, the, 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 the prayer is, God, please don't let there be a baby within five rolls of me, because it just... Fortunately, I put in my earbuds and turned the music up loud. Okay, so that's one. Okay, the next one is... I like this one. I did not think these up. When you hear the toilet flush and you hear the words, uh-oh, it's already too late. I, I heard a, a oh yeah or an amen on that one. Here's one. Certain Legos and coins will safely pass through the digestive tract. I see some people laughing and they're like that. Uh, we had to take uh, one of our kids to the emergency room to have a little, um, uh, make, to have an x-ray to make sure that something was not there that wasn't supposed to be there after a certain period of time. Or... Uh, this one, um, the children and or men in your life expect you to have the patience of God. Uh, and um, so anyhow, I know that I tried my mom's patience, as did all of my brothers, and uh, we all at times deal with patience or the lack thereof. Rather than adding a slide, um, well, let me go on. I've got a couple things more. It says, moms are not the only people who have their patients tested. We all do. And so I'd ask the question, uh, what are the things that test your patients? Well, I just want to share just a little bit about the tail end of my week. It is very difficult working on uh, a, a sermon message in a small group about patients because I don't know if if I had more circumstances where I needed to have patience or where my patience was tried or whether I was just more attuned to it this week, but starting on Thursday, I'm not gonna list all of them, um, but, but Thursday night, uh, I took my guitar home because there was some stuff I wanted to work on in terms of music. And I recently put together a, a new a take-home 
uh, music file for me. You know, we have about 160 songs in our repertoire, maybe a little bit more than that. Um, and we, we keep, we're trying to add some stuff periodically and stuff like that. So I took my music folder home. I got home, and the two songs I wanted to work on weren't in. My brand new music folder that has never been used. Explain that one. Well, that day started off early. I got up here early, and uh, as I was on my way, I was missing something for my lunch. It's not a necessity. I normally have a salad. There's something I put on my salad. So I went up to Winco, went to the aisle. I have this certain kind of salsa I like to put on it. Went there, went really fast. I got it. And if you go to the grocery store at 7 or 7.15 in the morning, there's only one line open. I see some nods going like this. And uh, so I walked up there. There's only one person in line. Okay, that's a victory in and of itself. And she had a pretty sizable amount of stuff in her cart. Well, that's okay. The checker was going fairly quickly. And so then she got done, and, uh, and, and she pulls out her card, and the checker says, please swipe your card. Well, actually, she, she, she at that point goes in her purse, and she digs around, and she pulls out her card. This is about how fast she went. She went like this. And then she went like this. And then she adjusted her reading glasses. And then she looked at the checker. And the checker said, please slide your card again. So she takes her card. I, notice, I have one thing. And she goes. Still, I'm the only person in line. It's amazing at this point in time. And she tries again, and the checker says, it says that there's something from your bank that's not allowing that to happen. Why don't you use the cash machine over by the door? She says, no, no, it will work. And the, and the checker says, no, would you just try the, the cash machine? She says, no, it'll work. So she takes her card. You know the drill. She was more deliberate than ever before. I'm trying to be really patient. And, 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 uh, and finally, the, the checker convinces her to go over to the cash machine. Fortunately, their cash register let her bypass that, so she did buy one thing, and I'm out the door. So it's like, God, I'm talking about patience. I see what you're trying to do. Okay, so there was that. Then yesterday, Brynn and I have been planning all week. We're going to we're going to change the oil on our boat. We've got this nice contraption that we bought. It does it real well. So I crawl down in the engine compartment. I put the thing down in the dipstick, and I pump it to get the suction that it needs, and oil goes everywhere. Down the side. I'm wearing my brand new shorts. Some got on my shorts. It's on my legs. Some of it dripped into the bilge. Brenda, help! Get some rags! Okay, so, so, so there was that. So we had an experience with that. Okay, we ended up having a good time down there, so um, weren't able to change it. We'll have to fix that, but that's okay. So on the way home, I told Brenda, we need to stop and get gas at one of the Costco's. So we opt for the Tacoma Costco. So we come in, and I turn, and I spot the lane that I'm going to. And as I start turning into the lane, a guy cuts the corner and drives fast, and jumps in front of me with his car. I kid you not. People get shot for less than that in some parts of the country. So I'm sitting there trying to, was I patient, Brenda? I'm not sure, I don't remember. I was quiet. <laughs> See, I do. I was be talking about patience to, today. I have never had anybody car speed up and cut in front of me to get in line at gas at Costco. Then, God got him. His card wouldn't work. <laughs> so he swipes his card, and it doesn't work, and he's pushing the buttons. He swipes his card again. The story's not over yet. So we get our gas. So we're on the freeway, and I said, Brenda, it's a hot day. Let's, let's go through McDonald's and get an ice cream cone. We don't get ice cream cones very often. So that's great. So we pull up, very short line. So we order our, our ice cream cones and a, and a Dr. Pepper and we pull up to the window where you're supposed to pay. 
and the girl's taking the order of the person who's behind us, and it's long. She's going on, and she's going on, and she's going on, and then she finally says, just a moment, I have to replace the, 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 the receipt paper. So she gets down underneath. Notice, we ordered ice cream cones on a day that's over 80. And so we've already been waiting, and she, she gets the, the, the roll out, and she gets it, and she puts it in, and then she pushes the button. She goes, sir, it didn't print. Would you like me to reprint it? That's okay. We don't need a receipt. We're just getting ice cream cones. And then I pay her, and I gave her a certain amount with some change, and she put in the wrong amount. So then to get, she has to get the manager to come with the key to open the cash register at our ice cream cones. I'm picturing that the other window are just melting. And we say, that's okay. I don't need to have the right change. It's okay. And we pull up there, and here's this one lady standing under the air conditioner with our two ice cream cones. <laughs> said, I'm trying to keep them from melting. And Brenda had one key thing there. She said, Lance, I don't know what they put in the ice cream from McDonald's, but they don't melt. <laughs> and I don't know if you know that. I think it's an act of God that happens. But anyhow, I can't wait till we're done with this message and this week on patience, because I am tired of having to be patient. I got the message, God. I'm supposed to be patient. See, we may want to say the prayer, Lord, please give me patience and please give it to me right now. Because let's face it, there's times when we're not as patient as we could be. And that's all of us. And I, I was picking on me uh, because I know you experience the same kind of things. And there's times when we feel as though we're not living up to what God wants us to do when we're not as patient uh, or we don't have perseverance like he wants us to do. And I think it's good for us to laugh at ourselves periodically, but to know that my patience is better now than it was five years ago. And my patience five years ago was better than it was 10 years ago. And it's only when we stop and reflect back and look at it that we can see that God is actually doing some stuff in our lives as it relates to patience. I'm going to restate um, what I would call the biblical definitions of, uh, of patience for, for today, just to make it a little bit more fun, and a little bit understandable. I'm going to talk about a long fuse as opposed to a short fuse. Guys, how many of you have done firecrackers? Now, I'm not, a, now, gals, if you do firecrackers, let me just say, how many of you do firecrackers? And be, be honest, raise your hands. You know what I'm talking about, a long fuse and a short fuse? How many of you have looked at the length of a fuse and kind of questioned whether you should do it or not? Gary's back there. I figured Gary would be one of those. He does still have all of his fingers. But as kids, we would go back to Iowa every other year to see all of our relatives. Fireworks in, in Wyoming, anything is legal. And we would go through and we would come back with thousands of firecrackers. We sold them, uh, a lot of them, but we also shot off a lot of them too. My poor headset doesn't want to uh, obey today. Uh, but anyhow, there were some fuses we should never have lit because they were so short. Back in those days, they didn't have long handled lighters like they have now. And every now and then, we didn't have a punk. Remember what punks are, the things you light? It got your hand a little bit a ways away. But there were some times we had some close ones because we lit a firecracker with a fuse that was too short. I learned from my youth, and the, the few times when we had kind of big fireworks at our house, um, when the kids were younger, always made sure there were long fuses. And sometimes long fuses burn fast. So you do not equate the length of a fuse to the amount of time you have to run. And so you, the moment the fuse is lit, you skedaddle because we need to have a long fuse. And that's the biblical definition of patience, I really think, in today's modern language, is, is to have a long fuse. That it takes an awful long time uh, for you to get to the anger or the blow up or the frustrations stage. Jesus had an incredibly long fuse. There's only a few times in scripture where you see him blow his, when it blow his top, and it was at the church leaders. It wasn't about those people who were sinners. It was about the church leaders. And so, uh, so I think one of the things we need to pray for is 
that we would have a long fuse. And that's a good word, a good definition for patience. The other word that is, is used there in Scripture as well is what is, what is called perseverance. And the, the good biblical definition of that, I think, is called keeping on, keeping on. You keep going on, even when you don't want to, you just keep on. Uh, and that is that stick to that we need to have. So, why is patience or perseverance important? You know, if it wasn't important, well, we wouldn't be talking about it, but it's very important. Why is it important? Number one, it's one of the attributes of God. God is so patient with me, and God is very patient with you as well. And that's a part of his, his nature and his being, and we're made in the image of God, and so he wants us to have patience like he has patience. So that's why it's important. The other thing is, is he calls us, let me go back. Uh, he calls us uh, to have patience and perseverance uh, as an attribute in our lives. It's that important. He just flat out says, you're supposed to be patient. And, and he wants us to be um, nurturing that as a part of our lives. So, um, how do we develop patience? Patience. Well, in, in today's day and age, I think one of the things we just have to do is we have to slow down a little bit. Um, I know that for me, uh, I run into more patience issues when I, when I wait till the last minute to do something. Um, I don't like to be late to anything. I also don't like to be early. And so there, there is that about four minute window and I can tell you that when, when that's going to happen, and if I try going up, can I avoid Meridian because I lose my religion going up Meridian. Um, uh, but but, but there, there's that four-minute window. Uh, and, and when I start hitting uh, uh, stoplights, then I get very impatient. Um, uh, several weeks ago, uh, we were on our way to, um, over to the scout thing for, for Noah's Eagle Review Board. And we pulled on the freeway. Gary got caught in the same thing. Freeway's at a standstill. You know, what, what, what do you do? Well, what I did is I called Noah's mom. We're on the way! <laughs> As I was impatiently trying to figure out a different way to get there. Slow down. Give yourself more time to do the stuff that needs to be done. Okay? The next thing that we need to do, I think is probably even more important, or I know it's more important, is read and memorize Bible verses that have to do with patience and perseverance. Because we can see if God calls us to do it, and we can take a look at where other people were patient or where they weren't patient. Um, I think it really, really helps out. Uh, there are um, 27 times where the word patient is listed in Scripture. There are 16 times where patience is listed. And there are um, 11 times when the word perseverance, which is very similar in meaning, is, is used. And it's only in the New Testament. We're going to talk more about perseverance this summer uh, when we're going through the gospel with the book of James. I will touch on it just briefly here, but we'll look a little bit more at perseverance because it's, it's linked with patience as well. So, so read and memorize scripture are, are some wonderful ways to be able to do that. And then next is to remember how God's been patient with you. And then, yes, ultimately pray for patience. Uh, I think it's something that we need to pray for. I know it's something I need to pray for, and I know it's something I don't want to pray for because I know that God will allow things to happen where I need to have patience. And so um, we need to pray for it. And then here's another big one, and this is so tough, and I'm learning more about it as I get older, and that is that God's time is not our time. And, and the, um, be patient then, brothers and sisters, until the Lord's coming. See how the farmer waits for the land to yield this valuable crop, patiently waiting for the autumn and the spring rains. Um, God's time is not my time, it's not your time. And you know, I used to pray for, for Christ to return. And um, well, well, we'll see about that in just a second. But you know, every day that he delays, it says that, he, it says that he's not slow. He just doesn't want anybody to perish. And so um, anyhow. We just need to have some patience. So let's talk about perseverance just very, very briefly. How do we develop perseverance? That keeping on, keeping on. Number one, pray. And number two is, is practice it. Keep on, keeping on. Now, what does that mean? So as an example, I like what it talked about, what Randy talked about in the, in the video today. Uh, but I'd like to use a, another example about that. Let's say that someone that you love is 
experiencing some very significant health issues. You keep caring for them. And, and, then you, you, and then you go home and say, I just, I don't know if I can go back there again. You're back there the next day. And then you get done with that day and you say, man, I don't know if I can go back up there. You're back up there the next day. You keep on keeping on, and it is not easy. When my mom was in the nursing home, I'd get very frustrated. I've got, I've got three brothers, and at that point in time, pretty much all of them lived in this area. And I'd get so frustrated because they'd never go visit mom. But I was up there five times a week. Did I enjoy going up there? No. Was it important to be there? Yes. Were there t- times I was there with a bad mood and the wrong attitude? Absolutely. But you keep on keeping on. And that's what perseverance is. You stick it out even when it is not fun. Next thing. God doesn't give up on you, so don't give up on yourself and others. Sometimes we need perseverance in sticking with ourselves. This last week, a friend of mine, his son is in rehab, or was in rehab, and um, his son would call uh, a couple of times a day and say, Dad, I hate it here. I want to leave. And he said, stay one more day, and then we'll talk. And his son stayed one more day. And then he called his dad the next day and said, Dad, I just hate it here. I want to leave. Dad said, stay there for a half a day, just a half a day more. And he hung up, and then he called the counselors, and his son stayed another half a day. Eventually, it happened yesterday, his son showed up at their house. He walked away from rehab. And how does a dad and mom keep on keeping on in the face of a struggle that their son is having that is just horrible. And I know many of you have had family members go, go through it, and it's, it's tough. And so what he did is he sent me and a couple other people he knows a prayer request and said, just pray for us. You know, just pray for us so that we can keep on being there, uh, not enabling. And they, they made a real strong stand. They'd, they'd laid down the law that they felt God... They were enablers. They, they told their son, you're not, you're not welcome back here. You can't live here anymore. You can come and see us, but you will leave. And uh, they had to let their son go out the door, knowing they outfitted him. He said, I don't like rehab. I'm gonna, me and my other buddy are going to go live up in the woods for a week and try to kick it up there. And so they watched him leave as they keep on loving their son, but knowing if they let him back in the house, every penny he has will be used in taking drugs. It's hard to have perseverance. And so the secret is God doesn't give up on us. Let's not give up on ourselves and others. And James, again, is going to talk a lot about perseverance. Blessed is the one who perseveres under trial because having been test, stood the test, that person will receive the crown of life that the Lord promises to those who love him. So how does God show his patience or perseverance towards us? And I think first and foremost, we saw that when we looked through the story two years ago, that God's patience is long. And God did creation knowing that it was going to be many thousand years before Jesus would die on the cross. And, and he knew that there was going to be unfinished business, but God has patience. So when people did sacrifices, that didn't forgive them, but what it did is, is that was looking forward, they didn't know it, looking forward to the cross of Christ where sin would be forgiven. And, and so what we have is we have from the, from the creation to the cross until now. God is a very, very patient He calls people uh, when uh, it's right for them and when they are ready to hear the call. And he is ready and willing to act and to hear them when they say, uh, please, I need you in my life. 
So first and foremost, we experience God's patience in our coming to know him. And then he shows us patience as we then seek to grow closer to him. Now, there's times when he gives us a gentle reminder and says, come on, get with it a little bit. Um, but God is a very patient God. He has not given up on you, and he has not given up on me. In Second Peter chapter 3, we find these words. But do not forget this one thing, dear friends. With the Lord, a day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like a day. The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as some have understood slowness. Instead, he is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. So then, dear friends, since you are looking forward to this, make every effort to be found spotless, blameless, and at peace with him. Bear in mind that our Lord's patience means salvation, just as our dear brother Paul also wrote you with the wisdom that God gave him. God is patient with us because he wants us to come to know him. When I think of another year of the craziness of this world, I think of it as another year for a brother of mine to come to know Christ. Or I think of it as another year for uh, a, a grandchild who we don't have yet. Or you can, you can see the list of things that are there. It's hard, though, when my view of time is right here and God's view is so vast and he can see so much more. So I think that the key to, to patience is, God, help me to see your time a little clearer and to realize that the sweating the things of this moment right now that are a mere inconvenience are nothing compared to the joy in heaven over one who has prayed to receive Jesus as Savior and Lord. And so friends, hang in there. If things are tough for you, um, Jesus never promised that it would be tough. In fact, near the end of his ministry when he was talking to his disciples, he said, if you love me, people are going to hate you. And, and you're going to have trials. But it's worth it. It's worth it. And when we think of, I can't take another step, I just picture Christ heading for the cross and that he took those extra steps for me that, and you, that we can take those extra steps for him and for other people as well and to keep on keeping on. And so, friends, patience and perseverance, they're not bad things. They're just about us taking our eyes off of ourselves and the momentary inconveniences that we have and focusing on God and the greater thing that he's doing. You know, yesterday when the guy cut me off in the gas line at Costco, instead of sitting there quietly being frustrated, and then when his car did work, silently be glad, what I should have done is said, Lord, if there's something in his life that needs him to hurry that's that important, it's okay. Be with him. That's not what I did. That's what I should have done. And so let's be in this together. As Red Green says, we're all in this together. Uh, so I want to pray for us that we would be people of patience and perseverance, but that the one place where our patience would be running out is depending on ourselves for our salvation. I want us to be impatient so that we would come quickly to Christ so that we could experience his love and his grace. So join with me as we pray. Father, in most situations, we need patience. I know I do. And Father, there are times when we need and I need perseverance. Lord, I pray that you would be granting us that virtue to be developed in our lives over the days and the weeks, the months and the years ahead. That we would be closer to what you want us to be. That we would say and do things uh, in a way that would be appropriate. Um, in ways that would build people up. Lord, it's tough at times to be patient. But we know that from the gift of the Spirit, we can do that. And so, Lord, we just pray that you would 
Give us patience and perseverance. But Father, if there's anyone here that doesn't know you, I pray that you would help them not be patient in terms of waiting, but rather to run quickly to you and to say, I need you as my Savior and as my Lord uh, to be in my life, to give me purpose, to give me forgiveness, um, and to help me be a part of your family. Lord, don't let anybody be patient there. Now, Lord, yep, give us patience and perseverance. For it's in your name, Lord Jesus, that we pray. Amen.